Michelle, welcome to our, our show and thank you for welcoming us into your studio. Um, first off, can you tell us um, what art form you practice? I know you're a textile artist, but you're a primarily also a weaver. Can you tell us the difference between those two things and how they relate to each other in your work? Of course. And uh, thank you for uh, coming to my place. Oh, first of my all. pleasure. So, yes, well, weaving is a process, it's a technique, it's a medium. It's the only thing that unites all civilizations. It's the only thing as a process that joins everything, right? For me, I think that that's mm. fantastic. Now, what do I do as an art form with weaving is my language, the way I use the threads and the medium of uh, using the vertical and horizontal, not only because sometimes it could be three-dimensional, mm -hmm. um, as a language of expression. So with the threads that could be <clears throat> the traditional, you know, the traditional tapestry weaving or the formal weaving or the orthodox weaving would be cotton, wool, silk, and linen only, um, I like to explore other kinds of materials in the weaving form, which is a structure. You know, the, the word itself, textile, it's taxere, and it's an, it is organized structure. Mm. So that's what I think it's really, really uh, good to understand and to put right now from the beginning, because People ask me, do you do fiber art? Do you do textile art? Are you a textile artist? Or are you just a visual artist? Right? Of course, it's visual, but it well, involves some other things. Right off the top, you, you said some things that were new to me. The idea that textile art has a sort of XY axis, the you know, horizontal and vertical, but then sometimes the Z axis. So we're talking about geometry. We're talking about um, math in a way. Uh, the technical part of mm -hmm. weaving, and yet, you know, you don't really think about um, those kinds of uh, building blocks as building, you know, building cities or 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 engineering X Y Z and thinking about forces and so forth. It makes me think a little bit about your work itself, which is abstract, quite abstract. It's not, although it it's based on images that you see in the world particularly nature in your work, mm -hmm. uh, it's very abstract. So it's not a literal representation of, of nature. Can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration and what your weaving and textile art is showing us? Yes. Well, of course, I will get to that because I think it's important to see how I take off in my own practice. But something that it's important that you mentioned about its uh, mending and women's things and through time, there has been a lot of, um, I don't want to say prejudice, because for almost 600 years, the main art form in Europe was tapestry. Mm -hmm. And it was an only male industry. Oh. And it was a very, very strong. Women had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Spinners, dyers, designers, artists. It was a whole industry that ran out, ran through, through, um, through Europe, starting in you know, Belgium, Amsterdam, you know, the low, then went came to Sicily in Corsica, and then went up to Italy, and then went to France, and then Spain, you know, all those, um, the history of tapestry itself, that was the golden age of the tapestry, was only a male wow. thing. And of course, women have nothing to do, because what do women do? In the meantime, they're pregnant, and they have kids, they do the sewing, the clothing, of course. So that's where I think we have to be very clear on the art form as, as a tapestry, right? Versus the things that everybody does for the everyday life. Now, when I take off, when, when I started, my dad, he was a violinist and a symphony conductor, but he showed me how to use the needle and the, you know, needles and crochet hook mm -hmm. because he would do his warmers. For his hands he would make them himself yeah wow. yeah yes and he would sew everything and so i thought that was fantastic you know and my my friends would tell me but your dad showed you that because mexico coming from mexico it's like you know oh that's an uh, only a women yes. thing right? right you know you do things for the kids you know there's um that very thin line about who does what mm -hmm. so um 
when I started doing that, I started doing my clothing and I started getting more involved with fabrics and the way to make patterns and structures. And this thing about the X, Y, Z that you were mentioning is that I was using fabrics to do three dimensional things, right? Which in my case was clothing, but then how to do puppets or how to do things that involve space. Mm -hmm. But it was only fabric and structures, right? And then I started getting fascinated with fractal theories. And again, we're going back to math, mathematics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then two dimensional weaving, which is vertical and horizontal, the structure of a plain weave. What happens if we do triaxial weaving, three directional weaving, mm. you know, like almost like a Vasarelli cubes. It, it, you can do it with ribbons, with three dimensional weaving. And then it becomes fascinating. I mean, right. it's a it's a whole world. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we've already touched on a number of things. Your dad, your history, um, briefly in Mexico. Although your history in Mexico is not brief, it it, it goes back. Um, your influence of your dad, um, uh, the the nature of weaving as an international, um, well, commodity. I guess they traded in this art form. Um, and news to me that it actually isn't, it wasn't, uh, as with all kind of Western art forms over the last 500 years, it was dominated by men, not, mm -hmm. not, not, there must have been some women, I'm sure, in it, but probably overshadowed. I think we, the research I've done, <laughs> because I love history, I used to teach really. the lady and the, and the unicorn and the hunt of the unicorn, which is the um, Middle Ages, you know, most outstanding art form and uh, the most iconic representation of the uh, Middle Ages art, the art in the Middle Ages. And it was all men. Oh, wow. It was Amazing. all men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember taking a trip through Vatican Museum um, once or twice in the past and seeing all those amazing tapestries uh, and not knowing anything about them because I was more interested in the painting. I was more interested in the, in, in, you know, the Roman and mm -hmm. Greek sculptures and I was tapestries, but now this is really educational. It's opening up a whole other world for me. Yes. Um, where, where did you study? I started in Mexico. Uh, like I said, I started with fabrics and then one day one of my friends, I was studying graphic design and before that my dad had paid some courses for me to do um, silk screen printing, batik, flange tie dye, shibori, to do the printing of the fabrics itself. I took some courses on pattern uh, transformation because I I ran out of doing my, my patterns. You know, my mom would buy me one pattern and then she bought, I, I remember she bought me a McCall's pattern and then the second pattern was a simplicity. And then I thought, why are the coats different? You know, the, the arms and the coats to join the, the pieces of the pattern are different because of course they're brands, right? They have to keep their own brands. And then my dad said, okay, you're really into it. Why don't you take a course on how to do your patterns? Mm. So that was fascinating. So one day I went to a party and I had made my own dress. And I found out that there was another girl with another dress, but with the same fabric. And that's when I said, no, I have to do surface design <laughs> and I have to print. So I started doing silk screen printing. And that's how I ended up in graphic design because in my house, we already did photography. We had a dark room in the house. So my house was always not very like the common house. You know, my both parents were artists, so it was very different to a regular household. Mm -hmm. So um, I was starting to do the fabrics itself, you know, was printing with stencils and potatoes and, you know, like everything, the surface. And then a friend of mine said, hey, there's a course in weaving in San Miguel Allende, which is like three hours from the city. And I thought, wow, there's an institute that actually teaches that. But it was traditional weaving, mm -hmm. which is the looms, you know, like the floor looms, colonial looms, they call them colonial looms, which is the, the um, two shafts, you know, and they were doing serapi, you know, like the rug weaving, mm -hmm. flat rug weaving. And I'm always breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. Dimitri, what can I tell you? <laughs> so the teacher was showing me to do lines and squares and triangles and grecs and, you know, very traditional, which are beautiful. And it was so hard. And I thought, why would anybody want to do rugs to be stepped on it? Mm. You know, I thought, I don't want to do anything for the floor. Mm. I want to be hanging 
because I don't want anybody to step on my, I mean, it took me forever to set the loom. I don't want anybody to, to be stepping on it. And then the teacher, you know, me, let's do a triangle. No, I want to do a triangle offset. Mm -hmm. And he started, no, because you know geometry and you know six counts yes. on this, six counts on that. No, but I wanted lines, diagonal lines, and I wanted to pull threads. I wanted something else than the traditional. And the teacher, adorable. We did natural dyes and everything, but I wanted to do something different. And I how, started how old putting. Were you at that point? I was seventeen. Mm. <laughs> but, and I was seventeen, but I had already done my 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 you know confectioning and designing and everything. I wanted to be a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized the how to make the fabric, it changed my life because I thought, wow, I've been working with patterns and transforming shapes into two and three D. So then I realized how the structure of the fabric itself. Right. And I thought it was fascinating, right? But after that course, I go back to Mexico City. And in the Museum of Modern Art, there's this amazing exhibition of contemporary Polish art mm. from the post-war. Tell us about that. Well, That's, that changed my life. So Magdalena Abakanovich. Yes, right. after yeah. that, I ended up studying in Poland because of that show. Right. But it resonated with me because they were using natural fibers. They were being off-loom, being sculptures you can walk between the, the shapes mm. it was just like tapestries where i was working with a hundred inch loom these were like 12 meters wow and i was i don't know how many times i went to that show but it changed my life was that before studying art formally at the university uh or around I, that time I, I, during that time i i signed up for graphic design because there was no textile mm. career there. It was textile engineering. And I thought, oh, it has too much math, too much, uh, right. too much formality. And graphic design had in that university, uh, the three semesters of the, the last three semesters, you could do a specialized area of textile, right. textile design. So I thought, that's it. I still need to do you know, techniques and art and everything, um, printmaking, photography, composition, design, yep. you know, not the newspaper and magazine. So the no, it lessons really in graphic good. design were quite useful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and did you, when you graduated from school, did you immediately start with your art practice or were you still making clothes? Or no, you, no. I graduated anything? and I applied for a scholarship because my dad had studied in Russia and I had studied in the U.S. and he was always encouraging us to go somewhere else right. explore the world that's your time you're not even married it's your time <laughs> to go somewhere so i applied to several uh countries i had relatives in france i was studying french so i thought well i'm going to search france i could study in the gobelin in the abuson in the traditional tapestry so i'm going to go to leeds or birmingham where it's textile design so i applied there if i don't get here i can get there but my number one was poland mm. with contemporary textiles so i applied to three or in indonesia also for the batik and plangi tai tai and so i thought let's see what happens mm. i applied to four and i got three hey, so then i had to decide mm -hmm. and so it was poland it was poland yeah. i was there for two years mm. with amazing teachers you know and returning to mexico i started a school a studio um, in doing um, textile and fiber art. Very good. Yeah. Um, so teaching right mm -hmm. off the top then, because now you've been a teacher your whole life and mm -hmm. you're a very nurturing person and very encouraging and love. I could see, see you in action when I have seen you and it's, you get so much energy from the interaction with your students. Um, so that very first experience teaching was in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and it, how many how many students did you have? Did you have a student? I had a well. I was teaching in the university when I came back. They invited me to work in the university. I taught thirteen years for the School of Design and Architecture, and I was <laughs> uh, I created the program of textile uh, uh, postgraduate courses in textile uh, because that school was very strong in design, mm -hmm. and we they were doing uh, paired with uh, in collaboration with one of the main. Um, design firms for for fabric design and upholstery so my students were always winning you know the the design in collaboration with the Museum of Modern Art so that was oh. on one side and immediately I started doing my studio so my studio was textile 
textil creativo, which was creative textile. And I had four classrooms where I was very experimental. I formed, I was one of the initiators of the Mexican Association of um, Textile Artists mm -hmm. in Mexico. And we started doing a lot of things. We organized the first biennial. We did things with the museum, you know. Um, I, I entered uh, my master's in museum studies because of the textile, you know, everything related mm -hmm. to that. And my studio ran for 10 years. And, uh, you know, I was working in the university and running my studio. Mm -hmm. And life, I got married. Life takes over. Yes, married, and then children. life, right? Yeah. I, I got married. We moved to Spain. I had two kids. And there was a little, you know, slowing of my practice because of the family, which was my time for being taking care of my mm -hmm. kids. And then we went back to Mexico, and Mexico wasn't what I wanted to to help my kids grow. Mm -hmm. You know, the insecurity in Mexico is not the best right now. So we moved to Canada mm. almost 20 years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And how many kids do you have? I have two. Two, and they're both They're in both arts, filmmakers. Right, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. at, at TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University. Well, my daughter already graduated. She's yeah. working for the TIFF. She's yeah. really yeah. good. And my son is graduating from, oh, that's yeah, amazing. from Toronto. What's the new name? Toronto Metropolitan University. Metropolitan yeah. University, a.k.a. Ryerson. It's a great school. Yes. Great school. Um, so... Uh, in terms of the, the we already started to get a, a feel of, of your personality and of your wanting to break the rules and and, and what I see in, in your work um, is a lot of references to nature um, and specifically now because I've, I've only known you since you've moved to the Northumberland County area and we're practically neighbors uh, most of that work is Canadian nature or you know stuff that you've experienced personally was that did that start way back when you were uh, in your studio <clears throat> in Mexico were you were you driven by by nature well my transition to what I do right now mm -hmm. has been probably the last 18 years mm -hmm. and it's almost when I moved to Canada right. now it's not the first time I live in Canada because I grew up in Thunder Bay <laughs> You know, that's it's another story. Chapter. That's another story. <laughs> because your dad. Yeah, he was a yeah. head of the music department at Lakehead University. Yeah. So and there was a Canadian connection before yes. Poland. Yes. Yeah. But Mexico is a very rich country of color and shapes and everything. But I grew up in, like I said, my family wasn't the, the norm. And my grandfather was an archaeologist. So growing up close to him, he had this amazing library with all the books from the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Olmecs and everything. And I was just like fascinated with the Mayan culture. My name is Mayan. It's the goddess of weaving. Mm -hmm. And my, the second name is Aztec. Ix Ixchel is... It's the goddess of weaving. It, well, I Weaving, pregnancy, <laughs> yeah. Weaving, pregnancy and uh, fertility. Right. So, but you know, fertility is always associated in all cultures to the process of creation, yeah. to the moon yeah. and to the weaving. In almost all civilizations, yeah. weaving is a process because when you weave, you know, like the backstrap loom or the, the itself, the warp, when you see it growing, it's like a pregnancy. Mm. And then you cut the umbilical cord <laughs> and then you, you release it to the universe. It's magical. It <laughs> is. Yeah. I'm, gosh, I think I want to take a course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, honestly, it's, it's magical. So anyway, for me, the Mayans are amazing, you know the initiators of the zero, the concept of math, math, magical thinking for me, you know, astronomy, you know, my dad had all these telescopes and, you know, he was registered to photography, astronomy today, photography today, all the magazines, we would be just like embedded in those things. And then mm -hmm. the books with my grandfather, you know, of the, the ancient civilizations. So that was my thematic designs a little bit abstract and Mayans here with the different techniques and everything and then I moved to Canada and then I go to see an exhibition of Norval Moriso oh. and then I thought wow you know the aboriginals here and the aboriginals there are so similar we have so much similarities in concepts and in abstraction of the shapes um, so I did a tapestry my first tapestry in Canada was precisely it was like a swish 
of cultures, the blending of cultures of the Aboriginals from here mm -hmm. and there. And for me, that was my first encounter to Canada. Mm. You know, the, the original art and my original art, my background, their background, and what happens to me when I come here trying to raise my kids, mm -hmm. trying to explain to them what is it about here and there. Mm -hmm. So that was called Aboriginals from here and there. Right. And then came winter. Well, first came the, the fall. First so, no, no, no. <laughs> and then the fall was an explosion of color. Mm. So I love photography. So I started taking pictures and pictures. So I started doing collages of oranges and complementary colors with purple. I love purple, you know. And that was my second tapestry, Autumn Trails. And it was just like triangles and leaves and everything. Very abstract. But it was very Canadian. Very Canadian. But still, I first was putting some pink. Yes. And then the transition. Not that we don't have that, but in Mexico, we don't have those transitions right. of... I mean, Mexico is colorful year-round. Mm -hmm. We don't have those those uh, breaking of transitions, right? You don't have dark and caves. Nope, nope. <laughs> and then winter. Yeah. So I was doing cross-country skiing with my kids, and I found a piece of birch. That's when it all started. Mm -hmm. Because it was a beautiful white tree in the middle of the white snow, and yet it was popping up. And you can see in between the forest, it was all... You know, sticks and sticks and sticks and sticks. It was all very quiet, calm and everything. Mm -hmm. And yet you see these accents of white. The birches were there. Mm -hmm. And it became like a musical, you know, accent. You know, it, like the tempo. <laughs> yeah. I, I play music. So for me, it was like almost like um, an accentuated mm -hmm. note in the winter. So I did my third tapestry. And I started doing that tapestry with ferns and fungus, you know, and I started feeling so bad because I was betraying my country. Uh -huh. I felt, what am I doing? Now nature took over me. So in between the bark, I started putting profiles and numerals and colors of Mayan subjects there. And that was my third tapestry. It's sort of as a way of holding on to your own identity. Yes. Or yeah. Roots. But that's what it called. It was called beneath my skin, because my new skin is Canada. Mm -hmm. You know. And you need lots of I've, skins because yeah. it's so cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I decided that if this is the country that mm -hmm. I decided for my kids to grow, and I'm staying here, you know, this is my country. For sure. So my new wrapping would be the birches. Mm -hmm. You know, I love all nature mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, growing in Mexico with all those minerals and the uh, stones and, you know, like the um, Baroque, you know, the Mexican Baroque that is very abrupt and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so there, I love it. I mean, you know? they, you're a very vibrant person. You're a very colorful, and nurturing person. But you saw beauty in the quietness of Canadian winters, uh, particularly just the contrast between the different whites, mm -hmm. the birch white being very different than the snow white and how it pops up in the snow and in nature. Um, so you're not one to be, to lose sight of subtlety, right? I, that um, subtlety is really interesting because we normally think of um, Canada as being kind of a, a really big landscape and a really big personality, if you will, of, mm -hmm. of pr primarily, you know, group of seven images in color. And of course they do have winter scenes in the group of seven mm -hmm. as well. But, um, as a relative, as with your views, with your eyes, your, your, from where your previous experiences were, which were, um, obviously bright and colorful and always intense in the sun to coming to, to Canada and seeing um, you know, the four seasons, mm -hmm. uh, your first piece ended up being very intuitively about the changes in, mm -hmm. in Canadian weather, the four, four seasons. Now it was your first body of work. Did you, did you, um, feel quite, uh, like that, that, that's a series, right? That's kind of like, it's not just one yes, piece. Yes, but I wasn't but looking at that time, you know, I've had other shows that has to keep some kind of a flow, Continuity, right? Yeah. But this one, they were just for just me. Just for you. They it were wasn't just for, for me. A, a I needed show. to do that because, um, you know, 
for me, tapestry, and you know how I am, you know, I'm Latin, I love dancing, I'm like, but when I weave, mm -hmm. I weave to myself mm -hmm. in, in introspection, it's an because it's a process, it's a very slow process. You don't paint over the canvas, you do the canvas. Mm -hmm. And that requires time, mm -hmm. it requires patience. And it's like uh, my dad used to say, you know, when you play the violin, you know, it's not just playing the violin. You just go, you know, like the frazada, you know, like the arm. Mm -hmm. It deals with your breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything has to be part of the body. So when I started doing tapestry like years ago, I realized that it's, it's, a, it's a moment when it makes me just calm down. Right. You know? Well, that's super interesting because it is uh, body and mind, yep. if you will. And I think maybe all the, the best art forms... I mean, you know, visual art anyway, even if it's a film, it still has material properties, right? Mm -hmm. We're constantly needing or wanting or are driven to work with the materials from the earth. Yes. Um, and, uh, and in a sense, um, our bodies connect with that through mm -hmm. the weaving process, right? Mm -hmm. So like the very... Because it's tactile. Right. You know, the sensorial, you're covered with textiles. <laughs> you go to bed and you're covered with a blanket. Yeah. You go to the table, there's a tablecloth, yeah. the curtains. You go in the car, there's everything that surrounds us. It's not that I'm obsessed with weaving, but I am. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but everything that surrounds us, it's textile. Yeah. You know, like if you can touch it, you can feel it. It's the closest thing that you have when you're born. Yeah. Right. So when you talk about body of work, you know, like years ago, I had, you know, usually as artists, we're looking for places to exhibit. Usually it doesn't come the curator knocking at your door telling you, hey, I'm offering you the main, the main the room, the main the gallery. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, so that happened to me. Moving here, uh, I had the opportunity of meeting George Whale and George Whale in Burlington for the Li Ching Gallery. And he said, I know your work. I want you in the main gallery. I didn't have work in tapestry. How can I make a body of work like in one that, year? Yeah. And I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to take the main gallery with no tapestries. Mm -hmm. So I said, George, I don't have, I sold everything before I came to Canada. You know, I, I had two dealers mm -hmm. and I used to do things for public art. I, I did um, commissions, you know, for houses, you know. But moving here, you know, after moving to Spain and then to give and the kids and everything, there was a time where I didn't produce that much in mm -hmm. tapestry. I would do a little bit here and take the kids to the classes a little bit here. You know, it was a very interrupted um, work of mine. But then when I had that opportunity, I told George, you know, of course I would love that. Thank you. But I need at least three years. <laughs> I can. So in those three years, I was weaving and weaving and weaving and weaving. But that was when I... I a body of work. What is it that I want to say in my new show? This is my new me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about nature. And then I linked it to photography because um, this thing about time and aging and being in another um, country slash planet, because mm -hmm. for me, it's completely different um, uh, place and time for me, right? Growing up, my kids are growing, you know, I divorced 10 years ago when that time was happening. So for me, it was just like a revelation mm -hmm. to do the new body of work. And it kept me rethinking what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to use more materials. I wanted to go three dimensional. I wanted to do installation and video form. I love music. I hired a musician to collaborate with mm -hmm. me to do an art performance with music. What can we do bringing all of that that I grew mm -hmm. up surrounded with? You know, um, the, 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 the music for me is so important. You know, when I'm weaving, I'm thinking, oh, this is pianissimo. And I'm touching silk and um, bamboo fiber. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of musical movements, mm -hmm. right? And I, that's me, right? So that was what uh, Natura Textura that started my new body of works. Right. And right now I'm linking everything to time. Right, and change. Yes, and transition, change. permanency, um, decay. It just, it just occurred to me that that expression body of work um, has a double meaning here in this conversation because we are talking about the body in relation to the work mm -hmm. and also your imagination. 
Mm -hmm. Because ultimately that's what's triggering all of this is imagination. Um, But the idea of uh, creating a body of work in in um, re-establishing or establishing your body in relation to this new place that you've Mm -hmm. growing into your new home, weaving this new home as you uh, perceive it and as your children experience it through their eyes, you're also experiencing that. Uh, you're building a body of work. Um, to me, that sounds like a house, like mm-hmm. uh, like you're building a dwelling. I mean, I, I, you know how spiders build webs, right? Like in, they're like weavers. I, I'm sure you there are other animals that that weave uh, that I can't think of in the moment. But uh, well, the birds, the birds, they, they, do these, well. they, they do these, they do these intricate nests they that are completely. Homes. There's a there's a bird that actually. Uh, some kind of like a embroidery you know the structures are unbelievable right with twigs and or even beavers i guess are weavers beavers yeah. are weavers yeah it's um, a structure yeah mm-hmm. um and beaver the weaver that yeah weaver. exactly <laughs> also the the idea of we were talking about music you were talking about other art forms archaeology uh i mentioned architecture you know weaving a house um all kind of come together in your creative practice in terms of uh, nurturing the home or nurturing your children or nurturing the, uh, the you know, listening to the music and feeling the beauty of that as you're creating a subtle piece or a, a piece that's reflective of, of, of whether it's birch bark or a bird or, mm-hmm. um, or the weaving of nature. It, it, as I beginning to realize like your your art practice i hate to use the word holistic but but you it it, your worldview in relation to your practice is a series of concentric circles like you know you from the center of the spirit your Mm -hmm. your imagination and then all these sort of ripple effects that grows organically you know yes um in um so that that's where we're at today and you're continuing to work with in this amazing space, this amazing studio with, with beginnings and endings of tapestries all over the place. I see some paintings. I see a lot of thread, uh, which I just want to go over and touch. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the work sometimes uses natural fabrics. Sometimes it uses uh, waste products, like re- mm-hmm. stuff Recycle. that is refused. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, man-made Pro, you know, for lack of a better expression, industrial mm-hmm. products? Is that yes, saying? actually, you know, I, I tried uh, even Coca-Cola fiber. Right. You know, I thought, um, how cool is that? You know, fiber process from the bottles. And then, you know, doing a little bit of research, I found out that it takes more chemicals to break it up than to... to but anyway, yes, I try to explore uh, because it's all about how you want to say things. Mm-hmm. You know, I had this... Uh, artist, very famous artist, that she said, oh, but you're not a tapestry weaver. Right. And for me, it was really interesting because I am a tapestry weaver. My technique and my medium is tapestry, which the definition of tapestry is weft faced structure. That's the definition. You know, when you do a kilt, you know, or the shirt you're using, you're, you're using the verticals and horizontal playing as a grid. Yep. So sometimes you see this, sometimes you see that, and then you get the squares of the um, Scottish well, skirts, yeah. right? But tapestry, you just see the warp. I mean, the weft. That's the design. Right. You, you, the warp is hidden. Yes. So, you know, that's my definition. But whatever material I use, like, for example, this one, you know, this is metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like the shape. And then you can mold it. You can do sculpture. But this, the warp is made mm-hmm. of metal, Right. So I started doing jewelry after that, you know. I like trying things. Sometimes it doesn't work. But I thought, why not, you know, this tactile thing? Mm-hmm. And also, you know, when my, when my son started working, uh, studying in Sheridan, I realized that he, he wanted to be a um, video game designer. And doing a little bit of research about the Nemo, for example, the Nemo movie, and how Pixar started doing the, the graphics, you know, was the fractal theory. We're going back to math again. Mm-hmm. 
And the fractal theory took me again to gold nature and how the fractals, you know, two of my tapestries refer to the math part of the repetitive patterns in nature. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. what I do is a repetitive thing. Mm -hmm. And photography, you know, the time and everything, how you put things together. And anyway, it's all trying materials, trying, exploring right. shape and form right. and how you put all those concepts well, together. Going outside your comfort zone is something that's typical for you. It seems you're always pushing, um, you know, you're, you're a risk taker, I think, yes. by nature. Yeah. Yes. I think you are. But I think I got it from my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Throw yes. caution to the wind and just yes. have trust yourself. Is that sort of the motto? Well, yeah, but sometimes have I trust faith. myself. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know, I'm going to try this material yeah. and it's like, uh, you know, like, but no. That's still but it good. Doesn't, you still learn something. Exactly. That. You don't know if it's going to work yeah. if you don't try it. Yeah. You know? And I, yeah, that's definitely yeah. <laughs> me. And I encourage my students, you know, I, I, I don't think I will never be the very formal. I, I like the formal study of design, for example, design, composition, the process, you know, you do, you know, how, how you get to an idea, you know, you have to learn about the artist and you have to process and then bring your own. But then at the end of the day, okay, so what do you want to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes they just like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, now you tell me what you want to do. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard, you know, so because it it's is. good to follow and you can be the best painter following like paint of my numbers. Mm -hmm. right? I What's write, your voice? What yeah, your but what voice? do you want to say? Yeah. And for me, my language, other than Spanish or English or French, would be my yarns. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell my students. How do you choose a project to start? Oh, I have so many projects. I have so many things in my life. So I have my bins with all my materials and trust me, they tell me what to do. Right. So right. I open this and sometimes uh, I don't want to work with these ones right mm -hmm. now. These are calling me. Mm -hmm. These other materials. For I'm sure reason. it happens to you with color, right? Or to materials yeah. to doing your sculptures. But Yeah, I mean, I think, um, again, going back to the materiality mm -hmm. and the inspiration from uh, objects and artifacts, whether they're natural or they're maybe uh, industrial or, or human made, uh, recycling of these things, mm -hmm. reweaving of these things. I think the return to material um, is certainly a really important subject these days, given mm -hmm. the environment. And rather than thinking about materiality as being, being a material person sound, is usually connotes somebody who uh, is careless about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, resources, but itself. it's actually yeah. the opposite. The, mm -hmm. It should be, a, I mean, being materially aware should mean and does mean, I think, um, uh, 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 giving that materiality its own agency and its own reason for being beyond our, you know, per, beyond projecting onto it what it could be. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you first came to Canada and this sort of nature discover, or these nature walks you went to or skiing, etc., um, that must have been quite exhilarating. And as a person that's constantly looking for as you do at the material world, uh, it's easy to be inspired. Yes, but you know what also, I think it has to do with, I right now I have this thing about, well, not right now, it's been a, a, for years, trying to analyze what is it about, okay, the tree that I was doing, mm -hmm. or the fungus, or whatever. <clears throat> There's something catalytic that, that catches your attention. And you go like, wow, the wow moment, I'm gonna take a picture. But the picture, whether it's a cell phone or a, a, a photograph, it's just seconds. Right. That yeah. emotion draws you to see something that you're not seeing in the other parts. And that for me is fascinating mm. because it's seconds. Mm. And you have an emotion. And then I transfer this emotion to the slowest medium. <laughs> right, right. And how do I keep the emotion? Yeah. You know, how do I say what I want to say that caught my attention oh, do you? and you know, we're all different. <laughs> and that's why when they say, I, I have friends in the, in the, um, in Europe that follow, you know, like to the, every point, you know, exactly. And they're beautiful, beautiful tapestries, but they're very methodical. They keep the same yarns from the beginning to the end. 
For me, and I'm going to tell you, you wake up, you open your closet, you take your jacket and say, I'm going to feel oof, the great right. with a blue one. Yep. Some other times, you the blue one, ah, you leave it, it there, work. and then the red, <laughs> ah. Because we are organic creatures that we react right. like plants. We change. Every day. Mm-hmm. You know, the position of the stars, um, you had a bad day, you didn't sleep well, you didn't have coffee, whatever. Yep. It's today. Yeah. How I have to process my work today. Mm. So I open my yarns, and sometimes I'm drawn. I'm drawn to use this material rather than the other because I feel it. So slowing down. Uh huh. That should make sense then, because if you are interested in in being real in the moment, if you will, then you have to slow down because if you're constantly speeding up or or only looking to history, uh, and if you're not working in the moment methodically. And maybe letting your imagination wander as you do it while you're mm-hmm. listening to music, then you're not uh, capturing um, anything. Or sorry, you're not capturing uh, what you want to capture, which is um, uh, sort of this, sort of this zest for life, and this kind of like a, you, you have a, a magnetic, warm. Uh, uh, contagious personality that people naturally feel <laughs> good <laughs> when they listen to you talk and, 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 and that makes a really good teacher I would think mm-hmm. um, it's, it's really I hope so. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> from what I've heard yeah. um, so it's really fascinating to get to know you a little bit better uh, in, in video mm-hmm. uh, for the Art Gallery of Northumberland to see that, that all of these um, micro decisions you made over the years uh, actually do create a universe, a shell universe, Mm -hmm. um, that is quite complete and consistent. Everything you do, everything you you touch, the way you, um, uh, you know, you don't plan everything to the detail, right? You, You leave lots of space for chance and for um, moment inspiration or epiphanies in the moment uh, you know oh that's drawing my attention I need to now go that way you said something about starting with the same thread and finishing with the same thread mm-hmm. do you literally start sometimes with, with well we have to I have to be consistent if I if I'm going to do a large tapestry but at the same time I'm allowing myself that's one of the things I had in Poland with my teachers for being a tapestry registered you know certificate you had to do a painting, you know, like an oil painting, and then you have to transfer that into a tapestry. Right. And for me, I said, well, I, I consider myself a skilled weaver. I can do a Mona Lisa if I want, honestly. I'm, I'm that kind of detailed mm-hmm. person. But why would you replicate would you another Mona medium? Yeah. For me, it made no <laughs> sense. Made no sense. I said, yeah. well, Missy, if you want to get your diploma, you have you to have do to that. Do of course I can do it, and I had to do it, you know. Yeah. But that was my issue. Tapestry is a medium on its yeah. own. Yeah. It's another language. You know, visual, you can also touch with your eyes, you yeah. know, all the, the, the richness of the materials, yeah. right? I mean, you can do palette knife, you can do, you know, other kinds of things with the oil, right? Would you rather translate a piece of music into tapestry than the Mona Lisa then? Oh, totally. Right? Or a piece totally. of bark or... Um, or mineral, or, yeah. yeah. Yes, totally. So not, not. Uh, so it's not about copying. There's some sort of translation that happens. I don't in the copy. I, for example, I, I was going to show this one because you're going to see it in the in the gallery. This is a picture of a of a photograph I took. You know, um, it's a it's a piece of wood. You know, mm-hmm. cut. But I was going through a separation, yeah. and for me, this represented my fracture. It's called fracture. Right, there are a lot it's of. It's called a cut in the middle, and. It has nothing to do with copying it's also a lots piece of, of wood. Lots of little cuts within the bigger cut. Yeah, it's like, like a uh, emotional like fra- fra- yes, fractures or whatever. So when they say, oh, so you're copying. No, I'm not copying. I would never intend to copy nature because nature is nature. Mm-hmm. Why would we copy that? Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to copy nature, take a photograph and frame it. For me, well, that's it's even, saying something yeah. with the threads yeah, yeah. or with my medium, right? And that's what I want to explore. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was, that's what I've been working the last 17 years, probably. And, you know? and you're not afraid to 
put your feelings into your work <laughs> and actually tell us. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling because, you know, uh, this takes me to how do you put the titles? You know, I'm terrible to put titles to my artwork. It's horrible. My sister, she's a poet. And so she's the one who helps me. She does me, it for you. She, sometimes, sometimes she helps yeah. me, but you know, like, because she's all inspired. And yeah. She's a singer. She's a mezzo-soprano. She's like so, so she's good with words. Yeah. I'm not. Well, that's, you that's know? Uh, also, I mean, collaborative, right? Mm -hmm. So weaving can also be collaborative. Right now you're working on a community engagement project, I believe, in, in Coburg, Ontario, yes. for the Art Gallery of Northumberland, mm -hmm. um, our host, and it is engaging uh, the local community. It's not in the gallery, I understand, but it's in the community no, we, center. No, we decided to put it in the community center because the Art Gallery of Northumberland wants to start doing programming, like cultural programming and community art uh, forms in collaboration and just inviting people to get to know more about the activities of the of the gallery so this project Lumen the lobby which i invite everybody to join us it's completely free it's going to run for six months and what it is is that i work with older adult centers with special needs with autistic kids with you know children sports you know whoever wants to join you don't have to know weaving. Mm -hmm. You can just sit and I'll tell you how. If you want to go for five minutes, if you want to go every Saturday or Mondays, you're more than welcome to do so. So every people are contributing to the actual loom. Yes, it's a big tapestry <laughs> and everybody puts their string and their emotion. Mm -hmm. You know. Where will the uh, final piece um, go? Will it be well, shown once in it's the done, center? Once it's done, probably it would go to the art gallery or in the community it center because it's a community right. project. Right. And the nice thing is that everybody puts their name, oh, you okay. know, and there will be a plaque with the, the, the participants of the... That's weekend. very nice, too, that everybody mm -hmm. gets acknowledged. Mm -hmm. uh, so down the road, they can come back 20 years from now and visit this. Oh, this yeah, totally. Or show their grandkids. Totally. Right? It's it's yeah. amazing. I love doing these projects. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I, can, I can tell. And um, again, you're, here you're working with the body of the community, right? Literally mm -hmm. many bodies mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in concert. Like, mm -hmm. like your dad was a conductor, you're kind of like the conductor of this. Yes, actually, I never yeah. thought about that. Really. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But you know what? It's interesting that a lot of people have no idea about tapestry. Mm -hmm. And I'm an educator, born educator, you know. I, I want to share something. And I always tell everybody, at least learn something every day. Yeah. Whatever, <clears throat> you know. Just Google a word or learn something. So for people to, uh, I have people just staring at me, just you know, like far away, and I always turn around, and you know me, I start talking, and the connection of the tapestry, you know, the first thing I tell them, you know, late 1800s, there was a loom, the Jacquard loom, that was the developing of the first computer. Right. When they say, oh, that's old thing, oh, your grandmother used to do that. No, it's a true contemporary medium. Right. It's a beautiful thing to learn, mm -hmm. you know, it has a lot of benefits, mm -hmm. you know, like for dexterity, fine motor skills, memory loss, preventing the, you know, for the, I work for the Alzheimer's, you know, they, it has a lot of connecting, yeah. right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's also beautiful to look at when it's finished yes. and, and become, I mean, whether it's just from one hand or from a group, mm -hmm. group hand, um, you know, th these, it is for itself. Like the, it, it has its own value, just like. Nature has its own agency. The tapestry, these mm -hmm. objects, these have lo lo life in them. They're lively. Mm -hmm. They're lively objects, if you will. Yes. Um, Michelle, I want to thank you for inviting us into your studio today and, and uh, giving us a tour, talking a little bit about your process, your history, your complete openness <laughs> to talk about anything. I think we could probably go on much longer maybe we'll have to do a uh, uh, part two to this anytime uh, maybe it, at the giant loom in Coburg we could sit sure, down sure that would be great there. and that would be fantastic too you know it would be great to for people to know exactly absolutely you know it's called the loom in the lobby if you search the hashtag loom in the lobby it goes directly to all the Thank images so people who are participating they say where can I share this image you know so anybody can it's participate there. yes um 
So thank you. Thank you for today, and thanks to our audience for listening. And thank you for the Art Gallery of Northumberland for this opportunity.